welcome to Unfiltered Career Talks with Margaret Vui. Um, today, I'm very excited to have Dalia Lorenzo um, on the call. Um, Dalia helps professionals land highly paid jobs through her program called Accelerate Your Ambitions. Um, Dalia and I met last year, I think, at some stage. We actually did a, did a webinar um, together, and Dalia has plenty of very interesting examples about how to help people land these jobs. So today's topic I'm actually very excited about um, is how to escape the job just to pay the bills and trap. So Talia, I mean, let's actually maybe start. Could you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background before we move on? To yes, the sure. Thank you so much, Margaret, for, for inviting me. Uh, I'm really I'm really looking forward to discussing this oh, topic. One. One, one of my favorite topics, how to escape the whole narrative of just, you know, working to pay bills and then you try to get on with your life in your yeah. in your spare time. So what I do is I help professionals to do just that, to figure out what it is that they're meant to be doing, what is the thing that actually gives them energy and that they would do, even if obviously we all need to pay our bills and have a great income, but what is that thing that you would actually do for free? Like, even if you took the paycheck away, you would still love it so much that you would want to keep on doing it. So what I do is I take people through a process where they figure out what that thing is and then brand themselves for the new economy so they can land that high paid job that they love. And my personal background is in communications, mostly with the UN, as well as a few private companies as well. And, um, you know, I, I actually got myself into that position where I felt like, wow, this work I'm doing is so amazing. I would not give it up for anything. Like, even if it weren't for the money, this is what I want to be doing. And that's where people started to ask me, hey, how are you getting all these great jobs? What are you doing? And that's how bit by bit, I started helping people to brand themselves and get into their own careers that they could love as much as, you know, I was loving my own life and my own career. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for this introduction. I, I lo look forward to asking you about some examples later. Um, but firstly, you know, what are the consequences if you settle for the job just to pay the bills? I mean, of course, we need a job to pay the bills. But what if, if you just work to pay the bills, right? If that's the only motivation, what, what are the consequences of that? That is a great question, because as we all know, in society, we are told, you know, just get a job, be realistic, uh, happiness is nice and everything, but at the end of the day, work is not really supposed to be fun. That's why it's called work. And we, we hear this all the time, usually from a very young age. So it can sound a little bit uh, unrealistic to actually get a job that you love. And that's why a lot of people, especially if you've had subpar or negative work experiences, you start to feel like, well, maybe this is all there is. Maybe it's not the end of the world. If I just get a job that is fine, that's okay, and I'll pick up a new hobby or I'll focus on my family or I'll focus on the other stuff, I don't need to, you know, not, not the end of the world if I don't have a job that I really like. And on the surface, there is nothing wrong with that, right? However, in practice, and what I see, I mean, it's happened to me and um, I, I see it all the time. I'm sure you've seen it as well. In practice, if you start settling for a job that you're not, truly happy about, but, you know, it pays the bills, um, you you start to lose yourself, really, because you're, you're in this job eight hours a day for around 45 years of your life. You can't ignore that. You can't just say, oh, those 45 years, eight hours a day, that doesn't count. I'm focusing on my personal life. Of course it counts. That is part of who you are. And so you really do start to drain your energy and you lose a part of your soul and you're not really self-actualizing. You're not the person that you could be. And that's where you see these people who, sure, they probably used to be a bright light and ambitious and feeling like they were going to do something in the world. And now you see them at their desk and they're hard to work with. They're getting cynical. They're bored or they're boring, right? When you're bored, you also become boring as a person. And they're just not that much fun to be around. And these people can be us. Like that is what happens to us when we're not in the right job. And then there are even worse consequences. Like I've had clients who are literally hospitalized over toxic jobs, right? Starts with a bit of back pain, um, headaches. I know. I've, I've had that too. I've had that too. Yeah. And I think we've all experienced those symptoms to one extent or another. But if you if you let it go on and you don't solve it as early as possible, bit by bit over time, you find yourself in the hospital and you find yourself with really, really horrible negative consequences. 
But mm -hmm. even if you don't reach that stage, you know, to be hospitalized, there's the question of well, who is the person that you want to be? Do you want to be the person who's just going through the motions and telling yourself, well, I guess this is fine. Or do you want to be someone who's like really energetic and you have a reason to get up in the morning and you're pumped up and you're excited. You're excited for those eight hours instead of just counting down the minutes of the clock until the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So those are the consequences of, you know, just ignoring, ignoring your work life. And it's called bargaining, right? Telling yourself, maybe this is not so bad. Maybe it's fine to just take my paycheck and go home. Um, and finally, sorry, one more consequence is yeah. uh, if you don't really enjoy your job, you are more likely to get laid off. This is something else I've seen a lot. People think that their job is safe and they go, well, sure, it would be nice to have something better, but I have this nice, secure, stable job, so I'll just stick with it and hang on to it. But if you're not happy with that job, you are more likely to get laid off. If your job is not giving you energy, you're also not giving as much energy, creative thinking, all of that to your job, and you become a less valuable employee versus the person who's gung-ho, like you just love what you're doing, and you're, you are more likely to get laid off, and that's something else I see a lot, and then you're like, now what do I do? I'm just lost in life, and I've been laid off, and I didn't like what I was doing before, but I don't know what I do want to do now, and it's a whole mess. So if you can solve that problem before the layoff or before something like that happens, then you can have plenty of other offers on the table and you're in a good spot in your career, et cetera. Absolutely. So actually talking about people who've been laid off, as we all know, plenty of people, many thousands have been laid off recently, especially in the tech sector, but not just in the tech sector. So how realistic do you think it is to get this dream job that you actually look forward to besides just the money? Like how realistic is it in the current climate? Yeah, great question. And this is where, like I said before, it's actually safer to focus on what you do want to do, focus on your own happiness, focus on what's my high value skill set that gives me energy. That's going to help you avoid layoffs and also get you better, higher paid job, uh, a better, higher paid job, as well as job security. So um, it's it's, it is totally realistic. I mean, I did it. Like I said before, I got to that place where I went, wow, this is amazing. This is the career that I want. These are the experiences I want my job to give me. And a lot of the clients um, I work, I mean, I have so many examples of people who have done the same. So we know it's realistic. We know it's possible. I think what people wonder is, is it realistic for me, right? Like, am I able to do this? And this is where you want to, this is where the the inner work comes in, right? Where you need to believe in yourself. You need to believe that you deserve to be energetic. You deserve to be that highest version of yourself. One of the few who actually do get a job that you love, but that, that starts from the inside, right? Really believing that you deserve it and that's meant to be for you as opposed to deny, denying it to yourself and saying, well, maybe that works for others. Maybe there's a few people who actually like their jobs, but I guess for me, that's just not possible, right? Like that's not what you want to be telling yourself. As soon as you start telling yourself that, yes, this is what's meant for me, then you will, um, you know, you yeah. just do the, the process and you can, you can get it. So I do want to ask you about how you get that job. But before I do that, can you just maybe share some examples of people who were in a job they didn't really enjoy, they didn't maybe know what they wanted to do and they, then they got their dream job. So can you? Yes, absolutely. I have, I have so many examples. So let me think of uh, a good one. A good one to share. Uh, there's so many different examples from people of all walks of life, all sectors as well. Sometimes it involves totally shifting sectors, like some people are just in the wrong place completely. Sometimes it's about making small adjustments, small tweaks, and all of a sudden that horrible, toxic job with a small tweak becomes this amazing high-paid job that you love. So one example of that was I had one client, Shameen. She was working as an accountant in a corporate environment. She hated it, the politics, the having to clock in and clock out of the office, feeling like maybe I'm too loud, but then maybe I'm too quiet, you know, all of that kind of thing. So she quit her job. She did a whole soul searching journey and still couldn't figure out what she wanted to do. And when we started to work together, we realized that actually she didn't need to totally change her career path. She genuinely loves spreadsheets. Like she actually does enjoy accounting. She just needed to get out of the corporate environment and work only with people that she likes. So she went freelance with the accounting, only worked with clients that she wanted to work with. And now she's earning even more than she did before. And she is loving her life, working with great people. But then I have some people who do total shifts. Like I had one client who was actually teaching at a school and she enjoyed her job, like she liked the kids and everything, but she knew that that wasn't her 
her highest path. She knew that she was meant for something else. So we started working together and she actually enjoys craft beer. It was kind of like a hobby of hers. And we realized that could be a great niche for her. And she went on to create her own content marketing agency as a beer writer. So that's a more original path. But that's it just, a very original path. Great. Yeah. So that definitely was a dream job for her. Where she how long did it take her to get from that stage? Like, how long did it take yes, her? To it only from- took her eight weeks. Like, my program is eight weeks long, and by the eight week, she already had her first client in the craft mm-hmm. beer space. So mm-hmm. it doesn't have to take that long when you just follow steps and um, you're not just kind of out there winging it. Oh, yeah. So actually, yeah. What are the steps? Like, how does one get one? How does one get that dream job? Then, what what are the specific steps that you would recommend? Yeah, so the the first step is really figuring out what is your career direction. So that might involve figuring out your niche. If you're like Amy and you want to start targeting a specific market, uh, it might involve, um, I mean, it obviously involves understanding yourself. And it really starts from within, because like I said before, there are all these societal expectations that just start Uh, sometimes they send you along the wrong path, right? Like you just think, oh, I need to climb this ladder, but it's not actually what you want. So it's, it's really getting clear at this stage in your life, what is right for you? What are your values? What are your interests? Uh, What's the personal personality and culture that you want to work with? Who is your tribe? You need to be, you need to work with the right people. Otherwise, no matter how great the job is, you're going to be miserable if you don't like the people around you. Uh, Lifestyle, right? How much money do you want? What's your ideal environment? And then, of course, your high value skill set. So what is your high value skill set, that thing that you love to do, but that also employers are ready to pay you a lot of money for? Because you can't, you know, you can't just say, I love watching Netflix, but nobody's going to pay you to watch Netflix, right? So figuring out the um, what you love to do, but also what the market wants to pay you for. And then once you have all of those in place, then you want to get started on your branding, make sure that you're branded for the new economy, that you're out there communicating how great you are in the right way, right? And then finally, uh, accessing the hidden job market, because the best jobs are, as you know, often not posted online, and uh, and you can get your in to them through networking, uh, followed by your interviewing and negotiation skills, A lot of times your dream job is something that needs to be negotiated. It's not something that's just out there and you just get in, right? You might need to negotiate certain factors. And finally, um, of course, interviewing and uh, and knowing how to make the right impression during your, your interviewing. So yeah, those are the steps. That's great. So um, thank you so much for, for sharing all of this information. Um, if people want to get in contact with you and find out more about your program and about what you do, how can they get in contact with you? So I actually have a free class which explains those steps and how you can implement them in your own career so that you can land your high paid career that you love uh, this year. Like I said before, it doesn't have to take that much time. So I, I break down the steps in this class. And the link to that is accelerateyourambitions.com. And then you can sign up and watch it directly. And uh, yeah, start making making it happen for yourself. Start figuring out what is that high paid job that you're actually going to enjoy and that you can continue to build on for the years to come. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for sharing. I will share the link below this video as well. Um, and, and for everyone, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you soon on another video. Bye for now.